Welcome back to another episode of Palisade Radio. I'm your host, Karema Mutlu. On today's show, we have Frank Holmes and Danny Levitt, who are both from Goldsport Discoveries. And here we are here at Jackal Island Conference uh, 2019 for Palisade. So how are you guys today, Frank? Outstanding, my friend. Outstanding. And you, Danny, having a good time? Yeah, great. Thanks, Krim. Thanks for having us. Let's begin by talking about AI and gold. Frank, I know you're heavily invested in the space itself, so give us a brief overview about what you're doing currently. Well, I think it's so important for investors to recognize the most successful hedge fund in the world, Ray Dalio's Bridgewater, and the biggest, has always been an advocate of gold. And he's always had gold as a counterweight for misimbalances of monetary policies for any country's currency. And I think this is a great lesson. And the second best performing asset class by Morgan Stanley that recently came out, and for the past 20 years, has been gold. And I find it just amazing how quick so many New York uh, media are anti-gold. But it's the second best performing long-term asset class. Only REITs have outperformed it. Uh, and if you add in uh, royalty companies now as in the gold space, they far outperformed the bullion and the REITs. So I think there's other ways of looking at this important for investors as the top uh, hedge fund in the world, Ray Dalio. Um, I highly recommend if you haven't read his book, Principles, to get him. It's on YouTube also. He has an app for it. Uh, and you can understand uh, sort of his philosophy at economics. But it also advocates this gold, and I've called the 10% golden rule. And you should have 10% of your portfolio in bullion and gold stocks and rebalance once a quarter if you're really active, once a year for sure, uh, to catch the volatility. And what is the volatility? It's a non-event for the S S&P or gold to go up or down 20% over any rolling 12-month period for 20 years of data. Now, gold stocks are 2 to 3% volatility uh, on a daily basis greater. So you can get a 40% move to a 60% move on gold stocks and before you have to think taking profits. So understand that DNA of volatility is so important. Excellent. Some great insights there, Frank. Okay, let's move more directly into AI and let's talk about exactly what you're focusing on currently right now. I think the, uh, my presentation today was all about inductive and deductive thinking and how inductive thinking your gut, um, this is where machine learning and AI has played a significant role that allows things like products like Alexia to work or Sirius and your Apple. Uh, all this AI is so important. And when it comes to taking a look at picking stocks, you know, we, we launched a product called uh, Go Gold, Go AU. Ticker is on New York Stock Exchange, just an ETF for 65 basis points. Um, this is then we spent 8,000 hours doing regressional studies. Uh, sometimes they take eight hours to look at one factor, and uh, we had 100 factors. Then we started putting them together in different different ratios, trying to find out really what makes uh, the attractive to the quant world, because quants today are 70% of the daily trading, uh, and quant research is so insignificant, and AI is critical. Well, we launched that product, and they said that 92% of the time, it, sh it should outperform the GDXJ, based on uh, going back uh, since the GDXJ started. Uh, and it's done that since we launched the product. So why would you buy something with the same expense ratio that is just index driven? Uh, and why does AI do for us? It gets rid of bad stocks that dilute values per share. Uh, and, and why do I love the AI? Because I think it's so significant. And we 92% batting average, and we're going to outperform it. So why would you put money in GDXJ? And it'll perform 95% of all active gold fund managers. So it's very intelligent, it's inexpensive, and with that, it goes down to $200 million market caps. Well, I'm a big believer in exploration, and I love exploration, and so we don't have that skill to really look at those assets, and then all of a sudden I was introduced to Goldspot, and I said, wow, I love what they're doing. Went to Montreal, visit, they have nine young PhDs that take all this data. I relate to it, the cleaning of data, the cleansing of data. So I immediately said, okay, I'm going to commit to your vision, Denny, uh, and I'll put uh, by 10% of the company and go on as chairman. So I'm very, very excited about this vision, and I think it could be the revolution for micro cap investing in the gold space or mining space, period. Let's move on to Danny and talk more specifically about AI technology in the mining space. We were briefly talking about how the reception uh, in mining concerning new technologies can sometimes be uh, not necessarily embraced. How have you found this so far, Danny? 
Um, as far as the embracing of uh, technology, I think we're all ready for a change. We realize the industry realizes that the risk profile for expiration needs to drop. Um, you know, we were quick to embrace new technologies as an industry, different remote sensing technologies, et cetera. The real problem is, is really the lack of our ability to understand that data. And so you have to understand from a resistance to change perspective, it's because we're fat with data and we basically have to face the music as an industry and say, we don't really know how to interpret this information. We don't know how to make full use of this powerful, powerful, powerful database. And that goes from the capital market side, trickles right down to the expiration to the drill bit. And with Goldspot and our team, multidisciplinary expertise, we can come in and totally unlock uh, the value on these assets that, uh, and that data really, that uh, the current expiration teams just simply don't have the tools and the know-how to do. They understand what we do as a product fundamentally, once we're done with it, they're very appreciative. It's machine-assisted expiration. It's not machine-driven expiration. So there's two, two very different things. And so when the industry, when, as Frank uh, illustrates um, with inductive, deductive thinking, the different axes of, you know, genius versus, uh, you know, I think it was in Japan, you mentioned that concept of uh, people learning by mistakes versus people learning by the aha moments. If we can create... If machine learning can absorb that mistake side of the uh, of that axis and we're just focused now on aha moments of looking at products that we generate analyzing them and saying okay uh all that heavy lifting has been done for me now i can think on another level and that's where our geologists really needed to to, to, to have technology assist them to be able to do that and so um to, to frank's point we were talking about uh, the capital market side of the business which i think is so important in picking out juniors and um, in our perspective, uh, one very powerful exercise that we did, and I noticed this at Pine Tree, we had so many investments. Uh, we were looking at things. I was the only person looking at things fundamentally. Uh, for the most part, there's a lot of jockey betting and, uh, and you know, uh, Bay Street's basically a lemming mentality. I mean, it, whoever's hot in the space, everybody sort of gravitates to those hot deals. And uh, we sort of throw the baby, the technical baby out with the bathwater when it comes to investing, which is fine uh, in some regards when you're jockey betting. But um, in our case, we looked at every single asset. We, we looked at all the data in Quebec. We took 1,586 deposits, trained our system on how to predict what land packages pound for pound were the most ripe for expiration. Then we overlaid claims, companies, and we could rank companies in their portfolios according to their ability and their, their, their prospectivity potential, their ability to discover. And what we ended up finding was we found um, a group of companies that had uh, the right blend, uh, top 18 companies we picked, pound for pound, had the best blend of market cap and, uh, and prospectivity potential, and we created a mock portfolio. This was our submission to Disrupt Mining, and really which launched uh, Resource Quantum Mental today. Uh, and we outperformed the GDXJ by 180% one year. And uh, that was on a mock portfolio setting. But what it shows you is that when you marry that fundamental analysis and you marry that quantitative analysis, that quantum mental approach, it's, it's so much more powerful than any other fund manager has been able to do in the space right now. And mining is such a small space that it's very hard to move massive volumes of money around. So that's why no one else has done it. And so we saw that as an opportunity and we took, the, took, took, took to the fight. Okay, as we begin to wrap up the show, Frank and Danny, is there anything else you'd like to talk about? I know, Frank, you've previously mentioned and talked about copper, and you recently wrote a blog post concerning the copper space and how that will lead the next resource pool market. Can you talk about this? Well, it's amazing to watch how fast and reflective, reflexive copper is to any trade war rhetoric. Um, it's resolved, boom, copper's making uh, 52 week highs. Uh, there's a hiccup, all of a sudden it's crashing. So copper is so key for overall global economic growth. Uh, but I think what's really interesting for me for copper is the second year of running a deficit. And we've gone now going into the fourth year of, of platinum having deficit, and people wonder why platinum makes new highs. Well, it's in deficit. People are still driving cars. There's new, they have to apply to platinum for cars, et cetera. So there's a disconnect uh, of what's driving these commodities, and supply restrictions very, very significant, even with a slowing economy. Uh, so I think, in like in a Kodak uh, snapshot, it's going to all of a sudden, boom. 
uh, copper, you know, is $4. Uh, why? Because uh, there's a shutdown of a strike in, in Chile, and we're in deficit already. Uh, zinc is another one that's in great deficit, uh, and it's making all-time lows. Uh, but steel prices are up in China uh, year to date. So you, you have something that's a disconnect with the zinc and copper that uh, usually leads to a massive surge. So when it comes to those stocks, that's why I think Ivanhoe Mines is my favorite, favorite pick uh, because of its highest grade. Uh, grade, grade, grade win always wins the day. If you're in crypto mining, it's cheap energy wins the day. It's always cheap energy. Uh, and so you learn there's a, a significant factor for any of these different asset classes. Uh, and so when you, if you say, okay, I want something that's really cheap, then I would say Copper Bank gives you 30, over 30 pounds of copper per share of optionality, and you're paying a nickel for that. That gives you great upside optionality uh, for that. Interview. But if you want to go and play for for tremendous brownfield going into production, um, I would say Ivanhoe Mines. And Danny, anything else you can add today? What has been the uh, the reaction from investors here at the Palisade Conference concerning Goldspot? Well, aside from a lot of the uh, those that are in, involved uh, in companies or very seriously in, involved in companies approaching us to try to collaborate and, and work together, I think that more and more what we're seeing is that, and what I'm hearing from investors is that Goldspot is a story that will really resonate to a new crowd. And we've been talking about the sentiment of mining with new generations and their lack of interest uh, thereof in the space because it's hard to understand. One thing they do understand is AI. And they do understand, if we can convince them about our model and show them that they have tremendous access to this market and through us they can play the mining sphere in it with an AI edge, uh, that's really what, what we're about. And I think today we, uh, a lot of investors have appreciated that. Excellent. Okay, thank you both. Thank you very much for your time today. Much appreciated. Thank you. Thanks. Happy investing. Think you understand the junior mining sector and you think that the participants in the mining sector, junior mining sector, are good people and kind people? Hit the bit. How violent that term could be? It actually could be quite violent. Uh, it could be a rip your face off uh, uranium rally. And the world is always going to need raw material. It's going to need copper and gold and nickel and so forth. Totally destabilized. Hey, hey, troll, did you hear what's going on in Yemen?